audio jungle. Hey guys, I just wanted to hop on and do a quick video, just have a quick chat with you about a couple of things that really helped me um, as I transitioned Savannah from exclusively breastfeeding to eating more solids to now sitting at the dinner table with us and actually, actually like engaging in conversation and eating a good meal. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to give you a couple of a couple of little tricks I learned and a couple of things that helped me along the way. So in the beginning when Savannah started breastfeeding a little bit less and eating more solids, I noticed that her weight fluctuated a little bit. You know, she kind of was growing, she was getting longer, she was drinking less breast milk, and she was losing a little bit of weight. Now I, I wasn't concerned at first, right? Like I was fine, I was totally confident about it until people started asking me questions. And I don't know what, why do people ask, why, why do they ask you questions about your child? Like, I don't know. Don't, don't do it, people, just don't. Because those are the things that keep some of us up at night. <laughs> um, so yeah, some people would start asking me like, oh, she's, she's losing weight, like, is she eating good? Is she, is she eating okay? What is she eating? Are, are you worried? And I'm like, no, not worried, she's great. But then again, of course, like, those things would just be kind of playing in my mind. And I did get to a point where I was like, should I be concerned? I don't know. I mean, she is losing weight, but she's getting taller, so maybe it's fine. So we had um, a doctor's visit scheduled anyway, like just a routine visit. So while we were there, I was talking to her pediatrician and she told me two things that really changed the game for me. So first of all, she was like, do not be alarmed if your toddler is fluctuating in weight a little bit, right? Like they're growing so much, they're eating different, they are like exercising new parts of their mind and ex exercising their voice a little bit. So choosing things that they want or don't want this day and that day and those things may vary <laughs> any day of the week. Um, so don't be too alarmed if you notice a little bit of like fluctuating in weight. Um, but then she took it a step further and she was like, let me tell you a little secret. Toddlers only eat one meal a day. They eat one meal. The other meal ends up on your floor <laughs> and the third meal normally just ends up being pushed around on the plate and kind of played with a little bit, almost like as if they were playing with some type of like texture activity. Um, and so when she told me that, I was like, oh, hold up, <laughs> wait a minute. Um, she's, she's right. I started watching Savannah every day and it would be, she'd eat one, she'd complete one meal, sometimes ask for seconds. But then by lunchtime, she was like, mm, more so just like making a mess and finger painting with her applesauce. <laughs> um, and then come dinner, I mean, dinner would just be all over the floor. That was basically what I learned. I was like, yeah, the doctor was right. She's eating one meal a day and I guess this is normal. There's nothing to worry about here. So that was super comforting. Um, and that was something that I was like, I have to share this with all my mom friends because no need to drive yourself crazy. No need to let the other people who are driving themselves crazy about your child then turn around and drive you crazy about your child. Don't worry about it. You got this. <laughs> you got this. Um, so then the second thing, though, that Savannah's doctor shared with me that just uh, took us to... Ah, the next level made me so happy, made Savannah so happy. Um, she said, a lot of times we label toddlers as picky eaters, right? And, and it's not usually even that deep. It's not like, oh, they don't like broccoli or they don't like apples. A lot of times this phase is more so about them trying to like find their voice and exercise their voice and make a decision and like feel like they have a little bit of power it's more so about that than it is about the food that's on the plate or the whatever you cooked for dinner and whether or not they like it so she was like you know what anytime you want savvy to eat present her with two things and let her pick like here's a banana here's an avocado which one do you want and when I tell you, like, the first time I did that, I just saw Savvy's little wheels turning. Like, she's actually thinking about, like, hmm, what am I going to choose? And her face is lighting up. She's, like, so excited that she's getting to make a decision. And then once she picks whatever one she wants to eat, not only is she super excited and, like, super proud of herself, but also, get this, she eats it. <laughs> she eats it. No fuss, no fight, nothing. No mess. It's not on the floor most times unless... We haven't had a meal that's on the floor yet for that day. Then it may end up on the floor, but 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that was a huge game changer. The, the choice, like stop just presenting, putting a, a plate together and just giving it to her and then being in your feelings when she doesn't want it. It's not personal. It's not that deep. She wants to make a decision. She wants to feel like she's becoming a little independent. And so just giving Savvy the two options to pick. I mean, I started using it with everything. I was like, which medicine are we taking? <laughs> if I need to get her to take like a cough syrup or something, I would put cough syrup on both spoons and be like, which one do we want? Even though I know that it's the same cough syrup, <laughs> but she's like so excited that she's picking. Um, or if we're getting dressed, I'm like, which pants are we wearing? If we're doing an activity, I'm like, okay, what are we doing next? Are we going outside? Are we playing with Play-Doh? And all of a sudden now she has a voice. She's like, well, my opinion matters. I get to pick what I'm doing. I get to chart out our day. I get to figure out what I'm eating for dinner. I get to figure out what I'm wearing to, to go to the park today. So just giving her that option, not only has it like increased her, you know, what she's eating at mealtime and made mealtime a lot less stressful and took a lot of the, the guesswork out of it for me, but also her confidence is just skyrocketing. Like she's just this confident little ball of fire and it's amazing and I credit a lot of that to, I mean, part of it is just who she is, right? But also just this little nugget, this little bit of information I got that I was able to start doing and practicing with her. And so I wanted to share that with you in hopes that maybe if you try it with your toddler, you will start to have a little bit of um, fun at mealtime, a little less stress, a little less worry about people asking you questions. Um, oh, and one more little bonus thing I was gonna throw in there. This is not from Savvy's pediatrician. This is just something that I've learned and that we've kind of, it just happened. Um, so when we moved here to Tokyo, we obviously uh, didn't bring all the furniture and all the things you would use and have in the States. We are in a smaller space. And so, you know, high chairs, as awesome as they can be, they take up a lot of like floor space, right? So I ended up getting her a little booster seat that we just put um, right in our one of our dining room chairs. And she sits right at the table with us. And I've noticed like just with the phase that she's in now, she's about April, May. 25 months she's about she's she just turned two um but having her up at the table with us has been so good for her and so good for us too i mean she like engages in conversation like whatever we're talking about at the table she's like <laughs> she has an opinion about it too you know she's watching us and like our table manners and she's watching us use our utensils and she's doing it she's even using chopsticks and she uses them better than me so <laughs> there's that um, but just such a shift. It's been such a shift, you know, from going from having her just like in her high chair over in the corner, um, to having her at the table and seeing all of the ways that it's helped her just like developmentally. Um, yeah, so that's just a little bonus. If you have the choice to either use a high chair, um, and have them or, or a toddler table and have them in their own space or have them up, up at the table with you making a mess. Uh, and shouting over your conversation at dinner, pick the latter, pick that one, pick the mess, pick the, the yelling at the table. It's so good for them and it's the, some of the sweetest memories for us too. So again, um, tips for getting your toddlers to eat and for you not to freak out. Uh, number one, just remember, they're only gonna eat about one meal a day. So eat one meal, play with one meal, and throw one meal on your floor. <laughs> And then secondly, always let them choose. As often as you can, let them pick. And yeah, let me know like if you try any of these things and they work or they don't work or maybe you've tried them in the past. Let me know, drop me a little comment below and we'll talk about it, have a little chit chat, um, exchange some ideas and, and everything. Uh, yeah, and so I guess that's about all for now. In the meantime, if you are just dying for more content, <laughs> you can always head over to my blog, lovealwaysjazz.com. And yeah, if not, I will see you again soon. And in the meantime, keep smiling. Bye.